What does it say up there? Connecting? Connection available. <laughs> well, you know, you got to watch those blue buttons. Start it's pushing eroded. those blue buttons. You're liable to get more than what you wanted. <sighs> We're on. Hey, I'm DC, and you're watching Bar Side Jive Live. Right, Lena? Hi, Lena. <laughs> no, just say hi. How do I? Just say hi, Lena. Hi. Just say hi. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Good. Hey, just have a seat and chill out. And here's that 15. How do I tag <laughs> myself in this? Um, so. Me and Daryl's video. No. So you are watching our fun, thought-provoking, fact-filled, soulful at times, high energy always, intellectually stimulating, uh, kick-ass. Give me something else, Anna. Hey, when we went to Disney, we went to California, and there was a store. I'm called, not even done with listen, my intro. I'm gonna give you a word. Expose. Of, oh. There's a word that was a uh, swelligant. And I'm going to use that word like... We're, we're swelligant. Swelligant. Swelligant expose on life. So if you want some of that crap, just tune in every Thursday at 1 p.m. Wait, maybe a sweat... Swexcellent? I think a swelligant. Swelligant. Like swell and elegant. We're like swelligant. swelligant. So we're at Stroker's Ice House, 9024 Harry Hines Boulevard, Dallas, Texas, 75235. If you want to drop Lena, me, or Rick uh, 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 some snail mail... That's the address. StrokersDallas.com And Strokers is not only known for their amazing custom bikes and their like cool ass parties, but the pub grub is like badass. Not really a pub. Especially the Donald. The, the Donald. It's pretty cool. What's on the Donald? Okay, the Donald consists of an all, a beef patty, cheese, um, a, a, Fried hot, egg. a hot link. Sliced. What kind of hot link? Earl Campbell. Earl Campbell, hot link. Um, a two slices of bacon, an egg, and a fried egg. A fried egg, and what else? Those people probably want a you bun. to take my Disney glasses off so they can see your eyeballs. Well, I was just checking out the Disney glasses. Hey, Carol, Connie, Carla, and Jarvis. Jarvis sent me an email. Did he? Mm -hmm. You're so popular. You've got such a fan club. God. Jarvis and Carol and Christine. And, and so today on the show, we are joined by... Michelle. Danny's here. Can we say that? Can we announce Danny Baker? <laughs> I should ask him first before I, before I identify him for the show. Because uh, they may not supposed to be here. Danny Baker's in Bullshit Corner. It, it, it is time to go back to work for most people. Steve's here. Paul, Paul and Nash are gone. You guys want to be identified? <laughs> Beg your pardons here. And uh, we just want to say thank you for everybody that's here and watching. We appreciate you guys uh, very much. Oh, and don't forget, Strokers was voted number one in Vogue. Rick was voted number one in Playgirl magazine. You know he has fantastic hair. Because of his hair. Yeah, well, what issue was that that he was in, like, Centerfold? Was it, like, 19... The issue. 1995? I'd say 96. He did the, he did the spread for the Playgirl? Yeah. So, so go, Rick. And uh, moving on, if, for a more personal experience, you know, you can always give Lena a call on the bar phone. at 747-477-2898. Good, you read it slow. 747-477-2898. Call Lena, talk to her direct. And hey, Alexander. Hey, Teresa. How you guys doing? Teresa. Teresa. Oh, Teresa. sorry. Sorry. I think it is Teresa. 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 Could be Teresa. Could be Teresa. There's two R's. So again, we want to thank you guys for your support, for sharing us, for the likes and the loves. That's what uh, keeps us motivated to do this every Thursday. Other than that, me and Lena probably wouldn't come do this, would we? Probably not. If it wasn't for you guys. I'd be so, at my desk working like normal. Yeah. Yeah. Like normal. So, hey, today is June 14th, and that means it's National Bourbon Day. Hey, it is Teresa. Look, Lena has it right. Teresa. Teresa. National Teresa. Bourbon Day. Teresa. So, where's the bourbon? There's a the bourbon, <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> no bourbon. We get no bourbon on Bourbon Day. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Teresa. <laughs> yeah, it's not today. Teresa? It's you that smells, not me. I don't smell. I just I took, I took a shower. Hey, can I get a like a oh, cold beer. a frosty mug? Yes. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing today? Oh, it is June fourteenth, National Bourbon Day. So you guys drink up the bourbon. My pro tip of the day is before you post that status update, ask yourself if you lied to get out of anything that day first. It's very important. Right. <laughs> Am I right? Am so I be right? care of those be, be careful of those post updates, status updates. Oh God. It's time for So we went to bed about two thirty. We get in, Thank you, Teresa. We get Excuse in me. for Excuse Disneyland me. last night. Excuse me for interrupting. Are you gonna tell them it's fam jam? Nope, because I have my sign. We went to Disney for a week, and... No, not me. No, <laughs> they did. We, like my little family, like her, grandma and Her and the kids took Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> it was me and Jordan. Poor Jordan. Rocky, Pearl, Grandma, which is Rocky and Pearl's grandma, and then Rat, my sister. Oh, God. I know. The whole, the whole clan. Yes, we poor, had, we had t-shirts made. I should have worn my t-shirt today. Poor Jordan. However, we get in last night. Our plane gets in at like 12.30. We, the kids were horrible, awful on the plane. Pearl oh my busted my lip because she was acting like a fool on the plane, even after we'd been and drilled them up. And... <laughs> That's like a little bit of drill. Take a pull of this, Pearl. So... <laughs> We get in, the kids are wound up, we finally go to bed like 2, 7.30 comes, time to go to school, and they go, you were going to school. Yeah. I'm a little tired today, and I didn't, I... She didn't shower. You just put your hair Well, up. I just didn't wash my hair. Yeah. It smells like Disneyland. So, we had a... Amazing. A VIP host. It was a very swellant time. We had a VIP host that took us to the front of every single ride. Wow. We probably rode 30 rides with our host, Michael, which was amazing. And if I was smart, we would have friended him on Facebook, and we didn't. And we took all these pictures with Michael because he oh rode the gosh. rides with us. So every time we we took pictures, Michael was in the back, and it was fantastic. And my kids loved him. Wow. But he wasn't allowed to hold the kids, but I almost got him to hold Pearl once. She would let him? Yeah. Well, she he wouldn't would... even come close to me. Hey, Kathy. She wouldn't even come close to me, Pearl. She looks at me like okay. I'm some kind like, of monster. This is Michael in the plaid vest. He was our VIP host. And then, let's see. We have more. Here's all of us in our Disney matching shirts. Tr Tracy, you're dying over there. <laughs> oh, God. Hold on a minute. Okay, stand by. We've got plenty more photos from the Disney trip. Here's Michael again on the Little Mermaid ride, way in the back. You see that? Literally. There he is. And then we took a picture with him at the end. Because we went to Club 33 with Michael. There he is, our VIP host. It was amazing. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And, it, and it's like $6,000, $6,50 a day because he's six fifty an hour. Uh uh. Thank you, Uncle Walter. Wow. We stayed with Uncle Walter, and that was. Okay. So here's the important question. You were gone for a week uh -huh. at Disneyland. And we went to the beach. Do I look tan? I have a major tan line on my back, which I'm not going to show you guys. So, what did you bring me? What souvenir did you get me? These Mickey Mouse sunglasses. <laughs> you lie. You didn't even bring me a freaking souvenir. I, I did. Where is it? It's at my desk. <laughs> yeah, whatever. If I, hey, Hammer, Gregston, my buddy. Hey, uh, if uh, he plays drums for Black Blackout, he's the Blackout drummer. You know Blackout. So, so my lip looked especially plump today because Pearl busted my lip open. I thought. You see I thought, it? I thought it was because you wore lipstick last look. week. It might have swollen up. You see it? Look. Oh wow, <laughs> that's scary. Your gums like infected. You yeah, I think her gum, look, her gum looks infected. No, it doesn't. It's kind of pussy. 
Oh, shut What's up. That what? I'm off of this show. What's that white stuff? <laughs> what white stuff? <laughs> All right, you My know it's because they're so they're white like cotton. We're so we're so glad Lena uh, made it back from her Disneyland <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> trip. I lost my voice a little. I think yeah. we're screaming either on the rides or at my kids. I'm not sure which one. Probably at the kids. Probably. I can imagine what it was like with the kids. Okay, so hold on, one more picture, uh -oh. and then I'll uh -oh. be I'll be finished. So Pearl, we thought we were golden. We get on the plane and like before it even takes off, Pearl decides to go to sleep for about four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then she wakes up and starts acting like a fool. I've never heard a kid scream like that in my life on an airplane. Four airport. minutes. Literally. Wow, what a break. Oh yeah. my, she yeah. is out. Yeah, we thought we were golden. Look at this one. Four minutes. Yeah, didn't last Wow, time. that's awesome. Little Pearl, she's a hoot, isn't she? Don't stick yourself with that pen. I was picking my fingernails. With okay. It. Since I didn't take a shower, my fingernails are Are you guys good. ready for the highlight of our show? I mean, besides the fact that Michelle Johnson's here, are you ready for the highlight of our show? Here I am. The highlight of the show. <laughs> DC's freaking news. It should be freaking news. The like news that you won't get freaking. anywhere. No CNN, no Fox. You won't see this shit anywhere. But right here at... at Barside Jive, Stroker's Ice House. Exactly. And on Google. Stroker's, sure you Stroker's found Dallas. That. com. It's Trump's birthday. What? It is. That's, that's should we, should we sing to him? Donald. It's the Donald's Beatles. Should we sing to him? I love the Donald's. We'll probably lose half our audience, but. Who cares? <laughs> if they're not Donald fans, we don't like them anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. She says cute baby. Okay, you guys ready? Let Michelle sing happy birthday to him. Mm hmm. Michelle? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Where's we'll Michelle? do it. Okay, so the breaking news is the news that you won't get anywhere else, but right here every Thursday at 1, couple stuck together for 16 hours after mistaking super glue for lubricant. <laughs> no shit, this is serious. Matthew Kinsworth, 39, and Jamie Loon, 37, called emergency services after realizing they were literally glued together and were unable to detach themselves from one another. Is this kid friendly? Well, yeah. One of their friends, all of our stuff is kid friendly, isn't it? One of their, well, kind of. One of their friends allegedly filled a bottle of lubricant with a very strong adhesive as a prank but eventually felt horrible when he learned about the 16 hour long hospitalization that later occurred. Dr. Anna Schubert, I like it to show. Dr. Anna Schubert supervised the 16 hour operation in which acetone was placed on the couple's genitals, anal region to unglue both men apart. Yep, both been. Shandell, Brian, hey. Good to see you guys. He has a picture. Although the couple literally went through an agonizing 16-hour hospitalization, they they've decided them. not to press charges against the dude that did it. Oh, it was a guy that did it? Yeah, it was a joke. The couple has also started a, crowd, a crowdfunding page on GoFundMe to help pay for the $58,000 hospital bill and have raised a total of $1,200 dollars over 48 hours they had no insurance okay ready for the next one show him the pick oh pick. he's got a pick of the two yeah there they are. it's not a very good picture we'll turn your little computer around no, i don't want to do that again because it's lena wants you to see the picture the one on the left looks like he was on our airplane because he's so tired yeah, of looking pretty. Okay, so woman arrested for attempting to remove her boyfriend. Why do we do this every week? You know I'm not going to let you read it. Why do you even? I gotta bring it? slide it in. You're not going to slide it in. It, she's pretty, pretty homely with me. She's about okay. as good looking as so, Becca. So, so Lena obviously is going to limit me to one freaking news per week. We're not going to do this again. You're going to print one story out, and you're I'm going to tough it through one story. But that was actually a short one, and that's okay. That's what I thought too. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, so now it's time. For DC's 60 seconds of rock and roll history. Delete. <laughs> this one's about Lewis Brian Hopkins Jones, born February 28, 1942, who's an English musician, better known as the founder and original leader of the Rolling Stones. That was my sunburn. You didn't know that. You thought that was Mick. You touched my sunburn. Jagger. I'm sorry. 
Initially a slide guitarist, Jones would go on to play a wide variety of instruments on Rolling Stones recordings and in concerts such as the rhythm and lead guitar, various keyboard instruments such as a piano and organ, harmonica, sitar, wind instruments such as a recorder, saxophone, oboe, and numerous others. Brian could play 60 instruments. That's six zero. Just Jones, like the seconds it's supposed to take to read this ritual. Jones and fellow guitarist yeah. Keith Richards developed a unique style of guitar play that Richards referred to as the ancient art of weaving, where both players would play both rhythm and lead guitar parts. Richards would carry the style on with later Stones guitars, and the sound would become a Rolling Stones trademark. Hey, did, did you notice that sign? What's a nice girl like me doing without a drink in her hand? That's new. <laughs> A few years after he founded the Rolling Stones as a British blues outfit in 62 and gave the band its name, now Jones did this. Is this Corona? Jones' fellow band member Mick Jagger and Keith Richards began to take over the band's musical direction, especially if they became successful songwriting team. Jones also did not get along with the band's manager, Andrew Oldham, who pushed the band into a musical direction at odds with Jones' blues black ground. At the same time, Jones developed a drug problem and his performance in the studio became increasingly unreliable, leading to a diminished role within the band he founded. So, the Rolling Stones in June 1969 asked Brian Jones to leave the band. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Danielle. Is this Corona? Yeah. It stinks. And Mick Taylor took his place in the band. Jones died less than a month later on July 3rd, 1969 by drowning in the swimming pool at his home while he was under the influence of drugs. Longtime Rolling Stones bass guitarist Bill Wyman said of Jones, he formed the band, he chose the members, he named the band, he chose the music that we played, he got us gigs, he was huge, influential, very important, and then he slowly lost it. Highly intelligent and just kind of wasted it and blew it all away. So Brian Jones, rest in peace, brother. I can draw on my sign oh, with yeah. my the, the man behind the Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah. well, you're jibber jabbering. Look what I did. He's a wild child. You gonna mess up your sign? Carol, make me another one. Yeah. Okay. It's time for our guest. Michelle. Michelle. Me Michelle Johnson. Michelle. We'll get her. A, we'll just let her sit right near the center. Getting ready for it. She has been getting ready. I've heard her like tune it up. Hey, Michelle, sit down. Okay. Well, Did you go to MacArthur, you, Michelle? Can we hold your guitar? MacArthur? Yeah. Uh, no, it's Skyline. Oh, Skyline, man. really? You're the non-MacArthurite here. Oh, my yeah. ex-wife went to Skyline. Okay. Uh, and her name ago. was Michelle. Really? One L. I've got two. Two L's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a long way. Michelle, the long way. Yeah. Michelle, the long way. <laughs> Michelle, we're so happy. Where are you going? We're so happy to have you. Lena always tries to slide out during our guest segment, but no, it ain't happening today. Are we on yet? We are yeah, on. You're live, oh, you're Are you guys saying happy birthday Party to the Donald? <laughs> the Donald? Today's oh, yeah. his birthday. <laughs> Donald who? Trump. The Donald. <laughs> well, I had no idea. I Me mean, either. She didn't even plan it. She didn't even plan the, the correct words oh. for the... So, mm. What are you drinking? I got me a little cold shot of Jägermeister. Mmm, Michelle. Yeah, that you know, warms up the old pipes here. The first time I saw Michelle was at uh, the tribute, uh, the jam. Uh, yes, we're was part, of, part of the all-star jam. Yeah, mm -hmm. you were. That was the first time I'd have seen you. Yeah. yeah you guys a, were awesome. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. We um, pulled that together pretty quick. Yeah, that's what I heard. I was, um, they said, well, you know, the even it up couldn't make it to do the heart tribute. Right. And I said, well, you know, I can I can do the uh, song Barracuda. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> and um, we used to play that, but we did it a half step down than the what's on the regular recording. Right. And that was <laughs> that was tough. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. But uh, we redeemed ourselves with some Led Zeppelin. Oh, some, you did uh, absolutely. And Dio and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, and you know, so, Zeppelin's my favorite. Yeah. So it's like I was like rocking over there in the wings. Yeah, yeah. all time favorite. Absolutely. When in doubt, when you're singing live on stage, you don't know what to do to improv. Just right. Act like Robert Plant. Right. 
He was, right. He's well, the master. You, you did awesome, and your voice was superb. It really was. Oh, you guys did a great job. I was really digging it. I was like, it had been a long day, and I was over the side, but you guys, like, totally woke me up, man, totally aroused me, so I was good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. well the free drinks started flowing about that. Time. Yeah, they did. They, 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 Everybody got happy. Thank God for Michael. Michael's a yeah. good dude. Michael. Okay, so here, here I've got some questions for you. Very formal, very serious questions. Okay. We'll be the judge yeah, of that. Yeah, we all the. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Okay, Lena. Here we go. So, how did your interest in music begin, Michelle? Oh, that is a, that is serious. That's yeah. super serious. Yeah. And I just came out the womb rocking. Did you? My first memory of my father is him actually singing and playing guitar. And me just dancing around. Wow. My dad, and he was doing like songs like Puff the Magic Dragon and, oh, you know, cool. some uh, Johnny Cash and stuff like that, you know. And, uh, my dad loves Puff the Magic Dragon. I love it. He loves that song. Seriously. It's a good song. It's a good song. Back then, uh, the Beatles had come out with Michelle, My Bell, right. and uh, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head by, well, I guess, was that Art Garfunkel? Yeah. Raindrops no. Falling on yeah. My Head. Was it? No. It, no, wasn't, it, it was a solo. It was a. Who was it? Uh, hum, Humperdinck. Humperdinck. But anyway, you know, it was. Okay, uh, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Because I didn't listen to that song. It wasn't in my playlist. No, but but. <laughs> my mother would play music all the time, and uh, it just was something that was always there. And my family, um, we all played an instrument, and we sang five part harmonies together for fun. Oh, wow. So. Uh, you know, I started writing my own songs about nine years old. Wow. Started playing guitar about ten, just you know, playing and singing at the same time. Yeah. So. Just grew up with it. Yeah. I grew up with it. It makes beginning. me move. Yeah, absolutely. My brain works better, you know. Yeah. yeah. BJ oh, Thomas. BJ Thomas. BJ Thomas. Yeah. Oh, seriously. Yeah, it wasn't Engelbert Humperdinck. Thank you. Now we know so, that. Do you guys like when I'm talking to Michelle? Do you like my profile? Is this side good? Look good. Hey, our, RF is done That's filming if you want to go over there after. Huh? RF is done filming if you want to go Oh, is he? There. So we can do our field trip. Yeah. Field trip is on. I thought it was going to be canceled. Okay. Yeah. Field trips rule. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have a photographer over here. Oh, yeah. We've got we to stop and pose. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, Love so, it. Michelle. Okay, I know you do a lot of trivia stuff, but you also do some original stuff. Tell us about your original projects. Um, well, it's the Michelle Johnson Band. Okay. Um, we are 14 years old. Thank you. Wow. I have two CDs that I've, you know, recorded, demos. Right. Um, the first one was called Blistered by the Sun, which had a little bit of everything from classic rock to some punk rock influence to country crossovers. Right. And my second CD, which was called Struck by Lightning, was more of a hard rock category. Right. Um, that was a lot of fun, and that came out in 2011. So you know how hard it is for musicians to, you know, fund their own CDs and recordings and stuff. We, uh, we're just now getting back into the studio to finish our third CD, cool. which... Uh, the title track right now, I mean, the working the working title would be Blistered by the Blue Flame. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Anyway. Where's that come from? So that'll be more <clears throat> on a hard rock metal deal. So where does the Blue Flame come mm -hmm. from? Well, I think it's kind of more um, something like your sort of a, uh, a phoenix. A phoenix coming out of the flame. Oh, okay. You know, how we have to dive into maybe a hurtful place or something to learn our lessons right. and kind of get beat up or whatever. Right. But, but after we've been burned, we come up stronger, you know, and more enlightened. So it's kind right. of like a, a, you know, spiritual enlightenment. Right, right. I don't oh, that's know. That's cool. No, that's kind of deep. I get it. I get it. No, I get it. Yeah. So uh, I think I know the answer to this. We ask everybody, George Jones or Led Zeppelin? Oh, Led Zeppelin. George yeah, Zeppelin. there we go. Hey, well, George Jones is no slacker, though. No, but he sucks. Uh, okay. Ronnie Spears or George Jones? Oh, uh, George Jones. <laughs> now, I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather look at Britney Spears. <laughs> Me too. You know. <laughs> Lena. Of course, she can't get anybody to like. Shame. Who was it? Britney Spears. Yeah, I forgot her name already. Yeah. Okay, so who were your major musicians? Influences. Britney Spears. <laughs> um, 
Well, of course Led Zeppelin. Yeah. But when I was first learning to play guitar out of songbooks and things, I really loved the Eagles and Fleetwood Mac. Oh, Stevie yeah. Nicks was somebody who, oh, yeah. you know, the, the White Witch, you know, she saw her live and she just right. <clears throat> moved me. Right. Um, and I've also, you know, I was sort of a grunge. In my youth, I was the grunge girl. Yeah. And um, loved Soundgarden and Chris Cornell. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's one of my very favorite vocalists. And, um, you know, and then moving on, Black Sabbath. I, I wasn't into the Black Sabbath when I was in high school so much as I was Dio because Dio was coming out with Holy Diver right. and all that kind of things. Right. Um, but I got into I got into Ozzy and Dio and Black Sabbath and you know we've been do, covering those songs forever in the MJB. Right. Um, but that's sort of how the Blonde Sabbath came about. Right. Like the tribute. So. Right. Cool. And you are doing that now. We're doing that. And yeah. so where do you perform Blonde Sabbath next so the people out there can go hear you? Yeah. Well, um, we're going to be in San Antonio oh. at Fitzgerald's. Um, wow, there, it's a rock and metal club. Everybody loves us. It's like our third time back there. San Antonio has a great scene. Right. Um, so we'll be taking the Doom Mobile uh, wow. down to San Antonio on so Saturday. So you guys down in San Antonio, let's see who's down there. Um, Debbie's down there and... Uh, Debbie, come on out. Debbie and uh, Joanne and... Uh, what's that weird chick's name, Debbie? I think her name's Kim. Weird chick named Kim. <laughs> no, I know a few I'm of those. just kidding, Kim. Anyway, go down when uh, she's coming down. What day? Uh, Saturday. The Saturday on the 16th. June the 16th. 16th. Mm -hmm. Go down and see her. We'll probably start about 11 o'clock. Uh, we have an opening band from Houston coming in called Wellborn Road, and they're pretty rocking too. Cool. Next weekend, we'll be here in the DFW area in the mid cities at Rob's Billiards. Okay, cool. We're going to be playing with Hillbilly Orchestra and the band oh, yeah. Cortez. Yeah, yeah. They're going to rock the roof off of that place. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. And um, you can catch the Michelle Johnson band. I do believe uh, July the 6th, we're doing a showcase with the Chicks Who Rock at the Curtain Club. Oh, that'll be good. Um, I think we're playing. The headlining slot, or you know, the the last slot. So we'll probably go on about eleven. Okay, cool. Cool. And, you want to get you want to get a drink real quick? Take a little sip there. You want? Mm. You need to. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, we're casual here. Mm. Sorry, mom. How are we doing on time? One twenty-four. Okay, we got a little more time. So, how many boyfriends do you have? <laughs> well, I have a lot of boyfriends. Do you? Okay. Yeah. I'm you can't say that because what if one's boyfriend is, is watching there? and then she's got to now I, he'll know she has other boyfriends. But I have a wonderful husband. Do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. right. Don't tell her husband what's, what's the his other name? boyfriends. What's his name? He is the fabulous Kevin Shumway. He's Kevin. He's usually uh, riding the lightning on stage left with me. He really? is my lead guitar player. He's awesome. my lead man. That's Where, awesome. Where's Kevin? So I've seen him. Kevin, I've seen you, him play. You have seen him play. Yeah. yeah. Wait, why didn't he come with you? Well, well Kevin's got job. a day job. Oh, but Jordan's not yeah. here either. Duh. You're on here? You think he's going to take off work just to come do yeah. this? Oh, he better not. <laughs> I tried good to get for. him to come. Did you? I did. But, you know, he's like, well, you know, acoustic's not my thing. And I'm like, yeah. whatever. All right, Kevin. You're next time, buddy. <laughs> he's such a metalhead. Hey, uh, do you guys have any kids? We do. We do. We have four children. Four? Wow. Four? Four children. We have wow. one son and three daughters. Do you fly wow. with your kids? You guys fly, are busy. Uh, we've not really. That's kind <laughs> of expensive. <laughs> yeah, we like to pile them in the, in the pickup truck. Right, man. You know? You got it. So. Okay, one of the most important questions we, can, we need to ask is, you know, well, how, do you, how do you feel about kale? Kale? Kale. Like the plant? Yeah. Kale. Like, you know, I healthy, like, like that healthy like, stuff. I don't like it. You don't like it? I know it's good for me. And, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I put it in my smoothies when Kevin buys it. Really? Kevin. Does he really? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. I like it tastes the, horrible. It does. It's, it's, it's rusty. Not, you know, they have these, these Parmesan kale chips. And it doesn't taste like kale. And I bought them one time just to try them. My kids love them. And they think they're chips. Yeah. I know. People eat those all the time. Yeah, right? I feed them to my kids. They're super expensive. I feed them my kids because they think they're chips. But well, people, you're a good mom. Suckers. People really rave about that kale, though. We like spinach. Spinach is good. Baby spinach. And, it, and actually, if you mix the kale with the spinach and stuff and then dressing, you know, it, it, it's, it's eatable. Edible. I'll do it, I'll do it in a smoothie. 
Oh. But I'm not gonna cook it. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know what happens when you mix it with coconut oil, right? <laughs> what? That's sterile. What happens makes, when you mix it with coconut oil? It makes it easier to slide. It just it makes it easier to, to swallow. slide that. No, <laughs> to slide that shit into the trash. Uh, <laughs> it yeah. slides out of the pan. Yeah. Oh, Bobette. Hey, Bobette. Jason. Shelly. Say hey, guys. Say hey. 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 <laughs> Y'all are so. Do that one more time. Hi, Lena. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Okay, so okay. complete the sentence. Music is my life. Okay. You know, everybody says that because it is. There's not another answer. What do you think, Lena? Music, Music is swelligant. Oh, swelligant. Oh, that's we, a nice big word. <laughs> we went to uh, California to go to Disneyland, and there was a store that we drove by every day to get to the freeway. And it was called Swelligant, like swell and excellent. I'm like, we gotta go there. I so like that it. was our word of the day was Swelligant. <laughs> okay, um, one more question and we're gonna let you play a minute. So, you know, all the times that you've been on stage, Are we fun yet? all the times that you've been on stage playing, I know that from time to time something kind of memorable will happen. Sometimes good stuff, sometimes bad stuff. Maybe something you saw in the audience, maybe something that happened on stage, a technical a technical thing. Tell us something really memorable that kind of makes you chuckle. Well, okay. Um, last year, Juan Sabbath took the Doom Mobile down to San Angelo. Okay. And we're in this place called the Penny Tap, which is a pretty famous bar down there. Uh, great stage, great people, and we were having a great time playing the whole night. Right. And we, uh, we're on our third set, and we're doing the song Sweet Leaf. Oh, wow. And everybody, you know, everybody loves that song that, mm -hmm. you know, after they've had a few, and the rockers particularly. Right. And out of nowhere, this guy comes out on stage. He's in his boxers. He's drunk, you know, of course. But he starts dancing around on stage, and he fires up, no kidding, a little spleef. And, I mean, we're laughing at him. I mean, we're singing the song. And we're performing like, going, oh, my God, this guy's really doing it. Right. They let him up there. They let him stay up there. Wow. But everybody was, you know, yeah. it, everybody was a little bit surprised. But we were cracking up over that. Oh, yeah. And now, like, he's our biggest fan. Really? Yeah. Follows you on Facebook. Follows and, uh, us on Facebook, yeah. He emails us a lot. San, An San Angelo. San Angelo. Yeah, it's an exciting place. It's a little bit of <coughs> history preserved. Oh, it really is. They have they mm -hmm. have like restaurants that have already gone out of business here, and that you know will be no more. Right, right. Yeah, San Angelo. I, I take I go through there going down to like the Terlingua Chili Cook Off. You know, I take that route. It's, San Angelo's different, but it's kind of a cool place. So, Michelle, we want you to play and maybe sing a little bit. Do you mind? No, that's why I brought my guitar. Okay, cool. No, I just thought you brought it as a prop, maybe, and I could just hold it, but no. You know, I thought I'd maybe, at, how many songs do you want me to do? Just one or two. One or two. Oh, okay. I was going to ask it. We, let's tell everybody, if they want to, like, see your schedule for either one of those bands, how can they do that online? Um, it's best to go ahead, I'm on Instagram as BlondeSabbath69. Okay. You can catch, you know, most of my posts there. Um, we are on Facebook, uh, the Michelle Johnson Band on Facebook, and uh, Blonde Sabbath on Facebook. That's really where we, you know. Post everything. Yeah, we do. Um, you can uh, listen to our music and our videos uh, on Reverb Nation, both bands, and uh, catch us on YouTube. Right. We've well, yeah. got some good stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I watched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I'm always, I'm always on Facebook. Okay, cool. So. Cool. Awesome. Well, we're going to let you play. Okay. You can stand, sit, whatever you want to do, lady. <clears throat> well, probably, Beautiful guitar. Probably, well, thank you very much. I, I've always been a Fender gal. <laughs> um, we just recently bought an Ibanez electric, so oh, really? that's been pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so, you want to hear an original or you want to hear cover? Uh, why don't you do one of each? Okay. So, since it's the afternoon and, you know, we're not really <laughs> in metal mode quite yet, um, I just sort of keep it mellow. Okay. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a uh, a song off of Struck by Lightning called Elizabeth, and um, how about a little Stevie Nicks or Fleetwood Mac? Awesome, that'd be awesome. Why did you name the song Elizabeth? Um, because I wrote it about a famous dead lady. Okay. Eliz I think it's Elizabeth Baxter Browning. Uh, she was a famous poet, and it inspired me to to write the song. Yeah, yeah. 
She's pretty cool. All right, one for the pipes here. Thank you for having me on, by the way. Oh, Michelle, it's our Yay. pleasure, girl. I'm really we appreciate happy you to taking, be here. We appreciate you taking the time to do it. Kevin. Kevin. All right, Kevin. Kevin rocks. He scored a few points with that one, didn't he? Yeah. He loved Pearl. You can buy me guitars anytime. You decided to give him another 10 years? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we've done nine now, so. Wow. You get a big present for number 10. I hope so. You'll yeah. Maybe vacation. Yeah. So, um, this is Rhiannon. We did this one. On Struck by Lightning too. We redid it. Shit. Love you never seen a woman take a mother. 
Donald Trump's birthday. You want to sing happy birthday yeah, to him? Yeah, yes. You think we can get it to him? You think Probably. we can happy like, birthday. We'll tag him on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, put it on Twitter. Does everybody want to sing with me? Yeah. Come yeah. on, y'all yeah. call gather around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Come on. Come on, cutie pie. Okay, we're ready. We all have to yep, stand, so stand by our president, <laughs> right? Okay. okay. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Donald. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Woohoo! Right on. That was awesome. Y'all yeah, sounded you amazing. Sing, you sing great too. No, y'all sound amazing. That was oh. gosh, y'all covered we me up completely. We should. We should. The happy order. birthday gang. Yeah. That was awesome, Michelle. Really. Thank you, Thank you um, so much. How much time do you have? I've got all kinds of time. You don't have to go somewhere. She's gonna no. go meet Kevin. Okay, because we're gonna. I took the day off for you. Did you really? I did. Aww, that was well, you have a day job too. Okay. So, yeah, I have a day job. Okay, so what what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish this and then we're gonna do a little quick field trip. You can come with us if you want. We're gonna go next door and okay. talk to Rick about some one of his custom bikes. Okay. And then. Um, and then we're going to take some photos. Perfect. Okay, you guys, hang on. We're not done. That was great. Thank you. Hello. To accept, press one. To send a voicemail, press two. Goodbye. Goodbye. As soon as I press one, it goes away. Okay, let's finish. <clears throat> let's finish. Okay, so somebody's calling the bar phone, but we can't get it to. It was uh, Tamara on the bun. Oh, Tamara. And, and, and as soon as I press one to accept it, Tamara she goes Tolman. away. And uh, her sister, Tanya. Tamara and Tanya. Tamara and, Tan Tamara and Tanya. Ta Tamara. Tanya. Tanya. Okay. She is. Oh my God. Tanya, I think it's Tanya. Okay. Like it's Tamara on the bun. Tamara on the bun. To accept, press one. To send a voicemail, press two. Here, don't fat finger it. To accept. Tamara on the bun. Hello. I knew it was Tanya. Tanya. I called it. What's going on, Tanya? Tanya. Tanya, like Tucker. Tanya. Tanya and Tamara. 
Well, if you cut if you cut your hair, I'll chop your Is head off. Is the camera on the bus? Yeah, see, no, I cut my hair. Tanya has it. I know it was Tanya. Yeah. Tanya called it. Somebody finally called the bar phone, everyone. Sounds like they're at a bar. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. I just want to say we love y'all. Come here. 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 Come V O K A L. K. Vocal yeah. with the K. Yeah, yeah. And you'll see my interview with uh, Roger Earl. And. Um, Roger Earl Keen? No, Roger Earl. Sir, Rob, Sir Roger Earl of the Fog Hat Band. And also my website, barsidejive.com, and it's undergoing some more changes. So uh, you can check it out. And if you subscribe, you can. Um, get the monthly newsletter that's going to be like coming out really soon the birthday newsletter no that's different you got to become a facebook friend of the page facebook.com barside jive live and you get an annual birthday greeting on your birthday every year unless i forget and you can also subscribe to our youtube channel and how that works is we take these episodes and we like edit them and then we put cool stuff in there that we think is cool. And then we put them on YouTube. So you can go back and watch the edited versions. And we like, like on Michelle today, right? Okay, so like we'll insert some of her other stuff and um, make it really cool. So be sure to check out our YouTube, youtube.com, Barside Jive Live. And click the red subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it lets you know when we post something new. And also, I know we're grown-ups, but we still do IG and Twitter. Well, we're not really no, grown up. Snapchat is for children. We, yeah, we don't do Snapchat. But we do IG and Twitter, and it's uh, Barside Jive. Strokers Dallas is also on Facebook and Twitter. We have a Strokers Dallas page, a Rick Fairless page, a Strokers Ice House page, a Fearless Services nice. insurance page. Do you want to talk about the insurance? Fearless oh, Services. <laughs> We also have Show Us Your America. You, you can't go without listening to about Fearless Insurance. Because it's more exciting than your 30, 60 seconds of jibber jabber. You know, I may change to Fearless soon. How do I, how do I get to I may change my insurance to Fearless. You should. We just, save people. Just for the heck We of do it. home and auto and motorcycle. We do all kinds of insurance here. And we have literally saved people hundreds a month on their insurance. I have Fearless Services. And I've been with my other agent for like 12 years. And they literally save me money. And I, it's not just because my dad owns it. They're legitimately. You can call Richard at 214-357-0707. Did you know I'm an insurance agent as well, but I don't sell insurance? No, I, I didn't know that. just have it just to, uh, to add to my business card. I didn't know that. Sure. Now you hey, uh, know what? Where's Chance Chesta? She had to leave. Her daughter got strained. She, she had, had to go leave. get her. Yeah. She had to go get her daughter. Her daughter. Is she coming back? Probably not. She wasn't playing. Praise God. Okay. Um, parting thought: Never make the same mistake twice. Just go ahead and make it five or six times, just to make sure. That's a definition of insanity. <laughs> oh well. So my website guru, who's currently doing some more work on my site, is Tony Coke. Chalkmycar.com. My logo creator, Jonathan Kimbrell, Classic Wax Records, Wax with three X's, ClassicWaxRecords.com. Our photos during the show are taken by Shasta, and her website is Shasta D, D like David, Bella. There's no apostrophe in the web address, though. It's not? No. You can't use uh, characters like that. Shasta D. Bell of photography.com. Angela Buffington, my dear friend from the Trinity River Blues Society and our new our director of SHARE. I thought that was Linda. Because she shares all of our stuff. Linda is the president or CEO. But uh, Angela does all the PR. And our signs are courtesy of Carol Burke. Thanks, Carol. Mm -hmm. Like this one. 
Teresa is here behind the bar today, and Anna's in the kitchen. Miss Tree. Right. Two best. Uh, two best. Yeah. Ooh, I'm the two best yeah. bartender yeah. cooks in uh, Texas. You guys have an idea, comment, opinion? My Kiba was the best cook in Texas. That's my opinion. Oh. Email dc at barsidejive.com is the place you want to send it. So fire away, fall back. What's that even mean? <laughs> Why does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know what that means. And so next coming up, we've got our own field trip. Thanks, Carol. We've got a field trip coming. So uh, are we ready to do this? Did you know that Daryl, Rick Perilous, and I all went to MacArthur High School in Irving? Hey. Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention a few things. Uh, let me mention The this. Adorable? Let me mention The Adorable is still adorable. Tommy Bedford. Shout out to Tommy Bedford. He's a great dude. Big supporter of the show. And he wanted uh, us to play a little cashmere <laughs> this morning, but... Uh, I, I couldn't, Tommy. I just couldn't do it. To, I couldn't do it. I couldn't spring that on Michelle. I just couldn't do it. So uh, maybe next time, buddy. And Teresa Thomas asked me how I was doing, and I just want to th uh, thank Teresa. I have a little thing going on. Doctor's checking out, and um, I'm, I got a test about three weeks. But uh, hey, but uh, I'm gonna what do they say? I'm gonna roll till I'm old and rock till I drop. So. Uh, what Roger Earl says anyway um, but I want to thank Jarvis for being such a friend and uh, that's it so we're gonna take our field trips you guys ready or you can come in a minute, whatever. So, Michelle, what we're going to do is we could do a little field trip. So, what we're going to do is Rick's going to come out. We're going to talk about one of his custom bikes. These are all his personal bikes. Yeah, really. So, we're going to talk to Rick about one of them, whichever he wants. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? personal bikes and Rick uh, we wanted you to pick out one today to talk about so what we, we talked about Susie last time yeah well we can talk about the bike that Megan's sitting on okay right let's do it 
I think this is I think this is my favorite bike. This one? Yep, the tattoo bike. This is an awesome bike. Okay. So this bike is a tattoo bike. We built it probably 15 years ago or so. And the, the whole thing that I wanted with this was to look like a sleeve. You know how guys get a sleeve? Right. And I wanted it, since I don't have any tattoos, I wanted to have a bike that was just covered in tattoos. And then the part, hold on, big. I have to, I have to, how many tattoos do you think are on this bike, girl? It's a cool chopper. It's just a different style. You know, if you can see mine, they're 
mainly stretched up and out. Right. right. Just to give it that high, you know, that high look. Right. But it's just, you know, I mean, there's all different kinds of bikes and all different kinds of choppers. This is the style that I like best. I love to ride this style. I love the looks of this style. It's just, uh, just a cool, a cool deal. Have you noticed Rick Barrels' style? None of his bikes have a front brake. Most you of them. That? Most of them don't. Some of them do, but most of them don't. You got a brake on the rear. That's plenty. Yeah, right. You know, is it safer to have one on the front? Yeah, but if you're worried about safety, stay at home. With yeah, don't get on. Don't get out of bed. Uh -huh. Yeah. Absolutely. I was scared to ride this one, and he goes, that's okay, you can park it in my Rocky's dirt bike. All Rocky's <laughs> three, and he has training wheels on his dirt bike. So he peer pressured me, but uh -huh. I'm glad he did. I was not scared of it anymore. Dad yeah. pressure. Good dad, job, Dad. Dad pressure. Hey, Rick, come over here. Yes, sir. Let's just say bye. The, hey, Lena, you guys, Michelle, get in here. Uh, I was going to ask you, why don't you have tattoos? My mom was always uh, against them, you know, and she used to tell my brother and I, you know, how would uh, tattoos look uh, with a white shirt on Sunday, you know, going to church. Oh, and so yeah. she just, for years, you know, when I opened my tattoo shop, she got all scared I was going to get one. So she drew out this contract and made me sign it. She carried it in her purse, uh -uh. and she always referred to it as a contract. It was a guest check, you know, like you get at the bar. Yeah, right. She wrote, Ricky will never get a tattoo until after my death, and made me sign it. She kept really? it in her pocketbook. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so I've, I've and you never, honored it. Honored it. And, That's and awesome. Ne never had a desire to have one, really. That's awesome. I think Dad yeah. and I are the only two that signed that contract that doesn't have any tattoos. Really? Well, I think you're half right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, half I right. know. Half right. I don't have any She uh -oh. has one. Oh, oh Lisa? Where's my tattoo? It's <laughs> somewhere that don't show. No, yeah. That's no, where no, it is. No, no. Yeah, you can't fool that. <laughs> You ain't fooling me, Jack. Well, hey, Rick, we thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, we've enjoyed uh, learning a little bit more about one, about one of your personal bikes today. Yep. And you guys have been watching Barside Jive, and we're out of here. We'll see you next Tuesday at 1 at Stroker's Ice House. Love you. Bye. Bye, Lena. See you guys. Thanks.